I will show you an amazing trick that can solve extreme Sudokus like this. And with that, it's solving time. You want to look here in column four to start off. Where could a four go? Well, can't be here because of this four. Can't be here because of this four. Cannot be here because of this four. And it can't be here because of that four. Only place to put a four in column four is right here. Greetings, friend. Sulfur and Shy are two of my most featured Sudoku setters. So when they collaborated on a classic puzzle, I knew I had to solve it for you. Thank you, Sulfur and Shy, for this truly jaw-dropping puzzle because it contains an amazing trick, awesome logic that will help you solve other extreme Sudoku puzzles like this if you understand how it works. And before I show you where to look next and how to get to that trick, I want to hear from you. When do you consider a puzzle extremely hard? Is it the posted difficulty? It's when you can't solve a cell to start? Is it the amount of time you spend on it? Please, please, please share that in the comments and help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. What you wanna do next is test this puzzle by going through the digit restrictions from one to nine. If you start with the ones, you'll notice with this one cutting across row three, so only two places for a one in block three. You do want to mark any time a candidate can only appear two times in a three by three block, or of course, if you're able to solve it in that block. Nothing else you can do with the ones as far as marking or solving. You look at the twos, there's only one two, no marks or solves there. Look at the threes, and you'll see with this three coming up, column seven, two places for a three in block three. Nothing else with the threes. The fours, you'll notice two places for a four in block five and two places for a four in block seven. Nothing else with the fours, go to the fives. Two places for a five here in block six and with these fives, two places in block two. Move on to the sixes. Two places for a six in block two, and with this six cutting across, two places here in block four. Okay, nothing else to the sixes. You'll see there's just not a lot of solving going on here, but you're gonna get something here. You might notice with the sevens, where can a seven go across row six? Can't be here, 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 or here, because there are sevens in those columns. So you can actually solve this cell for a seven. And then with this seven and this seven, you got two places for seven right here. And then in block seven with these sevens, you can mark sevens in block seven. Move on to the eights. Two places for an eight in block six. And in block seven with these eights and this eight, two places for an eight right here. Okay, move on to the nines. Don't see anything else with the eights. Two places for a nine in block one. And then in block six, you might notice with these two nines and this nine, you end up in the same spot of nines as you do with the fives, right? Because there's a five nine here, five nine here, five nine here. Whenever you see these marks on top of each other, you found a hidden pair. The five nine are restricted to the same two cells. Nothing else can be there if you're gonna be able to put a five nine in that block. And I cover hidden pairs and the other top strategies in my free Sudoku solving guide. These come up quite a bit. Okay, after doing those nines though, uh, I'm gonna tell you there's nothing else you can see there. So a solving tip is you wanna go back through, focus a little bit more on pairs and try to notice uh, if there's any other easy solves you can get before looking for those more advanced strategies. We do know the puzzle is gonna be very hard. And if you're pretty astute, you might see here in block five that you have a four, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay? And then a six and a one, look at this cell. If you go down here in row nine, you'll notice that you have four, six, seven, eight, nine, and a five and a one, look at this cell. So what can those two cells be, right? They can't be a one, they could be a two or three, but they can't be a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up there, or 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down here. So you find a nice two, three naked pair. And you might get real excited here. You go, all right, Tim, this must be the trick we were looking for because this will leave you with a four, six, seven, eight naked quad. And you can remove the four, six here. You can remove the four there. You can remove the eight here and the seven right there. However, it doesn't really do anything else for you. That is not the secret trick. That's It is helpful. It will help us with the solves later on. But it's just a nice way to find uh, some more restrictions. But that's it. That is it. There's nothing else easy to find here. And so I always talk about you have two options at this point when you know you got to start looking for advanced strategies. But we are dealing with an extreme puzzle, so there may not work. We'll just see. First option is you want to look at single candidate strategies. So like with this one, you'd want to look and see where all the ones could be in this puzzle. All the possibilities for a one. And since you found those pairs, the hidden pair, the naked pair, you're able to kind of remove some places where a one could be. Since we only have one given one, there's a lot of possibilities. But what you'll notice is there's not a lot of conjugate pairs. So where there's only two possibilities in a row, column, or block. You got it here, and that's it. And so there's no swordfish, there's no X, Y, wings, chains, anything you can form with the ones. And you can do this with the, all the other digits, two all the way to nine. You're not going to find anything with those single candidate strategies. So then the other option, option two, which I talk about, is you want to look at buy value sales. You're just, you know, you're increasing. These are a little bit more difficult to find versus the top seven strategies. But this is what you want to do, you know, as far as investing your effort to kind of solve these puzzles. So you want to look at buy value sales and see what you can do there. You might notice, you know, there's, we already have some BBCs listed. There's a few more. If you look right here in block three, you need a one, two, three, or an eight. With the one, three here, that's going to be a two or an eight. And with the one, eight, looking at this cell, that's going to be a two or a three. If you look at this cell right here, you'll notice that it cannot be a two, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So that's a BVC, one and three. And then this cell right here, and the way to find these is look for heavy houses. So, you know, there are five or more digits in a row, column, or block. Those are the best chances you're going to have to find these by value cells. So you notice that. See, there's some other digits over here. So if you look at this cell, it could be a one, but it can't be a two, three, four, five, seven, eight, or nine. So it could be a one or a six. And that's it for the by value cells. Do any of these work together to help you do any? advanced solving no not really there's nothing there and this could be very frustrating for you i understand so then you got to look at this third option and remember this is shy and sulfur they want you to think and what they do in this third option is you want to ask questions to see if you can determine the setter's intent so what did sulfur and shy what are they trying to telegraph that is like trying to show you where to look what are they hoping that you can find here? What logic can you find? Kind of think of where all these digits are. You notice there's a big clump of digits right here. And they almost point down here to block 7. And I actually looked at block 7. I thought that's got to be the key. And there's not much in here. But with this solid amount of digits, most of them are similar. There's something going on. Uh, this is very similar to what's called a firework strategy so a firework is when you figure out that in a block a digit is limited uh, can only appear in the column in that block and only appear in one of the rows in that block and so with the firework what it tells you is the only place you can put a digit if it, if it has to be in the column and the row is right there wherever they intersect so whether you know if it was this column one and row nine, you have to put a digit right there. Well, this there already there already is a digit there, so we can't quite use the firework the way I, I normally see it. But if you look at the type of restrictions you need, you'll notice if whatever can you're looking at can't be in these two cells in the column, and it can't be in these two cells in the row, it would force a firework type restriction here in block. Seven. 
So what cells would force restrictions in both the column and the row? You want to look at those intersections. It'd be these four cells right here. Okay? And I'll highlight that in blue. So because, you know, this cell sees this column or that row and that cell in that column, this sees two, all these see two places, one in the row, one in the column. What can these cells be? It's going to be a one, two, or three, because you got the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there. This could also be a one, two, or three. This could be a one, two, or three if you check it out, because you got the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or four, five, seven, eight, nine here. You got the six right there. And this could be a one, two, or three plus an eight. Okay. So now you got to say what puts all the restrictions on these rows and columns. You ask this question, could you have two of the same digits in here? You know, could you have a one here and here or like a two here and here? Well, let's check that out. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the diagram. X marks the spot. Let's say you have both these are a one. So you're repeating two of the digits. The only way you can do it is in these two spots or these two spots. Well, what would happen here? Ones couldn't be here. So they have to be in one of these spots in the column. But ones couldn't be here. So they have to be one of these two spots in the row. So if these are both the same digit, if it's a one, in order to satisfy the column and the row, they have to be both in this block. But they don't have any shared cells. There's already a digit right here. This can't happen. This would break the puzzle. And you can try it with twos. You know, you can put the twos there, threes there, whatever it takes for you to understand. If you put two of the same digits there, you're going to end up with this situation. And you're like, well, maybe Timberlake, it's just that uh, you're using those two. Hopefully you see, though, if you put, if these are the same digits, you, know, you put a three there. And you get a three in the corner, bum, bum, bum. you get the same problem. The threes will block out here, they block out there. It doesn't matter if you're doing these two or these two. How do we avoid that? How do we avoid breaking the puzzle? Simple. You got to have four different digits in those four cells. Got to have four different digits in those four cells. So what does that mean? It means... We didn't solve that for a three. We just hypothetically thought it was a three. That, well, you know, these can either be one, two, or three. To be different, you know, you can have a one there, two there, three there, any combination. But we said, you know, these can't be the same. The only fourth digit you can add is in this cell. And by making it an eight. And if you do that, then that's the only possibility you have of solving in block seven. This is beautiful. Uh, Awesome. The logic here, draw dropping another take on a firework type scenario. And you will see firework type setups in these extreme puzzles because the solvers don't know how to handle them. This puzzle is rated very high in the extreme range because it doesn't understand how firework does work. And it gives you lots of advanced alternate inference chain, forcing chain type strategies to get around it. So let's put an A here, see what happens. Let's see how far you can get. If this is an eight, what does that mean for this puzzle? It means that's a two, that's a three, and that'd be a one. We're just cleaning up those digits. And then with this eight, give me eight there, you can put an eight right there. Okay, so far, so far, so good. Then what can you see? After putting in the eight, let's look down here in column seven. You got a one, two, three, four, seven, eight. You need a five, six, or a nine. Well, a five, nine there. Means that's a six, this would be a five nine. Okay, so far, that's so good. And then let's kind of follow some of these sixes. With these sixes, displace that six, solve this cell for a six. And you look across row three, where can a six go? Can't be here, here, or here because of these sixes. So you can solve this cell for a six. And then look across the row, we need a 5, 9, and 8. So we can use my neat naked triple trick. 9, 8 right there, 8 repeated. You're going to solve all three. That's the 5. That's going to be your 9. The only place the 8 goes right there, displacing that 9. 
Okay, making some good solves here. Now what can we do? Let's follow some of these nines. With this nine and this nine, you can solve for a nine right here. With these nines, you can solve for a nine right there. You got a five nine right here. And we solved all the nines. Okay, after the nines, how about the fives? With this five and this five, got a five right here in block eight. Only place for a five in block seven is going to be right there. And then with this nine, that's got to be your five. Okay, come over here with this eight. You know, that's going to be your seven. And then with the eight, seven, that's got to be a six, which means this is going to be a four. That's going to be your eight there. Nice. And what else can we do with that? With these eights and this eight, you can solve for an eight right here. And you got all the eights knocked out. Okay. We were able to do some sixes, eights, fours. Now at this four and this four, you can solve for a four in block nine. Four here in block six. Displace this four, solve for the four here in block five. Took care of the fours. Do some marks here. That's got to be a two or three. This would be a two or three to cut across the road. Going to have a lot of two or th twos or threes. So now you got to wonder, is there going to be some weird advanced strategy that we need? Does this be great? All these twos, threes, and ones. This would be a one or a three here. I'll mark that. But you might notice with this three coming down, you can solve for a three here. So that's kind of nice. Which gives you now one, two across here. Okay. And then with this six and this six, you got a six there, one, two there. And with these sixes and this six, you can solve this for a six now. Okay. Uh, with these sevens, you notice we displaced the seven, so you can solve for a seven right there. And so then you end up with, looks like a one, two, three here. This would be a one, two, three. But if you look right there, this is going to give us some help, right? This is the full house. Eight and nine digits filled out. The only thing we can put that remains in row eight is a one. Nice. And so by removing that one, now you can solve this for a one here. And you got a two right there. Okay, this is helpful. Because... Now we can start doing some more solves. You know, you got your one, two right here. You might notice this can't be a two anymore. So with these twos, two is going to be one of these spots. We displace a seven, so put the seven there. You can put a one, three right here. This will help you out. With this one, three, that means the only place for a two in the row is right there. So that's a two, one. With this one, three, that's got to be a two. Okay, and then with these sevens, it's all for seven right there. All right, and with this two, this is going to unlock all these marks. That's three, that's two, that's two, that's three. One, two here, that's got to be a three, that's going to be a two. Nice. One, three here, beautiful stuff. Two, one, I think we're not going to need any more advanced strategies. Three, one right there with this three. That's your one. Our last digit is a three. Now see if you can spot the extreme strategy in this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.